Hi, it's Steve Hargadon, and we're closing in toward the end of the second day of the sixth annual Global Education Conference. This has been a terrific two days so far. We have two more days to go. We sure hope you're enjoying yourselves. We're having a blast. We have a team from Marymount School of New York here. Welcome, everyone. Hi. You're all afraid to say anything into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> conflict with each other, but hello, girls. Hi. Hello. hello. Thanks so much to our conference sponsors and supporters. We are so appreciative of the really great moral and financial support the BIF, TES, the Global Campaign for Education, Iron USA, and our other sponsors have provided. Uh, we send our deepest appreciation to them. For those of you who are participating live, you can click on the star icon to the left of the map, click on it twice, and then click on the map. That will let us know where you're participating from. We'll put a note in the chat as well. We're expecting heavy rain tomorrow. Lucy, looks like it's just about to hit Chicago tonight. Okay, in India, you make us international. You let us know who you are and what you're doing. Oh, Australia, lovely. Of course, Coach Carol. Okay, keep the information coming in the chat. We're going to move ourselves forward here, and we'll turn it over to the student technology team. So hi, welcome. Hi. My name is Arthur. Oh, who's speaking? Oh. Oh, it's okay. You can go. <laughs> all right. So uh, first of all, welcome, and, and on behalf of uh, Anna, Sophia, and Eunice, and Gabby from Marymount School of New York, I want to thank Steve and Lucy for asking us to do this keynote. Um, it means a lot to us, and we thank them publicly for their support of the, uh, this initiative that the girls are going to talk about um, this evening. So. And Sophia, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, hi, I'm Anna Sophia. I'm a senior at Marymount, and I'm also the president of the Student Technology Leadership Team and a co-coordinator of our Student Technology Conference. Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm a junior at Marymount School, and I'm also a co-coordinator of the Student Technology Conference. Hi, I'm Eunice. Uh, I'm uh, also a junior at Marymount School, and I'm, I am another coordinator of the Student Technology Leadership Conference. So as we said, we all go to Marymount School, which is an all-girls independent school on the Upper East Side in Manhattan. And uh, we go through grades nursery through 12th grade. We are also an Apple Distinguished School. So that means that we provide access to technology for students and faculty 24-7. Uh, we also use our technology in innovative ways. For example, we have a fabrication lab in which we do various projects. And every student in the whole school has Apple technology. Uh, all the girls from nursery to sixth grade have iPads. Fifth grade have iPads. And then the grades above those have MacBook Airs. So Eunice, Gabby, and I all have MacBook Airs provided by Marymount. And our student technology leadership team was founded in 2011 at Marymount. We provide technological support for students all across Marymount, especially the upper school, but also across other divisions. One example of something we've done recently is we made a Marymount snapshot. So this is a way for us to connect with other students it's almost a way of reimagining a high school news broadcast. So we deliver different contacts, contacts and up, updates to the students. Another thing that our tech team does is the Student Technology Conference, which is what we're going to talk about in this presentation. 
So we're going to give you a little bit of a background and history of how the Student uh, Technology Conference came into being. Um, we're actually going to dial back to December 2013 when our leadership team uh, started to have conversations about the possibility of connecting with other student technology teams at other schools. Um, we were aware of some other schools that had started a technology team, specifically one in New Jersey. And the girls wanted to start to make connections because Marymount is part of a network of 21 schools in 14 countries. They thought it was a reasonable opportunity for them to start to connect both with uh, their peers in our network of schools, but also with peers in uh, other schools that had student technology teams. So we reached out and we formed a cohort of about six schools. It was a very low, low sorry, very loose cohort. Um, the students will be the first ones to admit that we didn't particularly have any direction. We didn't know exactly where we wanted to go with this. But the first thing that the students said was, it'd be really great if we could put together some form of virtual meeting with our network of schools to sort of kick off uh, in a formal way uh, this new arrangement that we had. So we started to think about ways that we could do that. And as we started to look at uh, what our common goals and ideas were, the six schools sort of went off in a variety of different directions. And we ended up uh, really with one school that we were working with that was really sort of committed to doing this. So as it turns out, we were fortunate enough uh, last January, January of uh, January of 2014, that um, Steve and Lucy came to Marymount. And their primary goal was to talk about um, specifically the Global Education Conference and how Marymount faculty could be more involved uh, with that conference. So as it turns out, um, I suggested to our student tech team, perhaps they could sit down with Steve and Lucy to discuss their concept of a virtual meeting of schools that had technology teams. Uh, Steve and Lucy were more than gracious enough to listen to the student's proposal. And within about 10 or 15 minutes, the student's idea for a small meeting with a small number of schools had grown into the proposal for an international conference um, that would be a focus with um, student presentations, student keynotes, but with a global uh, scope to it. And I remember walking out of the meeting uh, with our four students, and um, they sort of turned back and looked at Steve and Lucy, who were still talking to our headmistress. And one of our students said to me, Mr. Walters, what the heck just happened in there? And um, it was really sort of a transformative moment for the school. It was a transformative moment for the students. And it was a transformative moment for myself, because I don't think we really fully understood the journey that we were about to take. So that's why we always publicly thank uh, Steve and Lucy for getting us off the ground with this, the idea for this conference. So we held, oh, okay. uh, we held our conference uh, in January uh, of this year. Um, and it was most of the day. It was from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And we had attendance from all around the world, including uh, the United States, Ukraine, Portugal, Brazil, Cambodia, Australia, and even Malawi. And we had four student keynote speakers. Uh, for example, one of them was a senior from San Diego. And he started a project called Global Buddy. Uh, which connects students in the United States with students in Afghanistan and Pakistan and a few other countries, and all virtually. Um, there's also several presenters. Um, I was one of those presenters last year, I mean this year, uh, in January. Um, me, my partner and I, Cheyenne, uh, we discussed uh, one of our ninth grade projects, um, which was called Creators Gallery, where we had to um, using art from uh, the Met, which is the Metropolitan, Metropolitan Museum of Arts. We, uh, we had to go into the history of se uh, several art pieces we found and then create a, a gallery for these art pieces. 
Um, so, uh, in, and in our presentation, we use um, uh, we use uh, technology provided by the school. In my presentation specifically, uh, I created a movie using iMovie and use Google SketchUp to create my floor plans. Um, so in our in our conference this year, we have uh, four planning schools, and going clockwise, the first school is Marymount School of New York. Um, we are the founders of this conference. Uh, the next school is uh, West Hampton Middle School. Next is University School of Milwaukee, uh, and then Lauriston Girls School in Melbourne, Australia. So. Uh, uh, the, the mission we have for the upcoming uh, Student Technology Conference is to provide an international forum uh, for the presentation, discussion, and sharing of educational technology in schools and other academic settings. Uh, this conference by students and for all is committed to fostering a better understanding of how students use technology in education and to engage students, teachers, and administrators uh, in a conversation about technology assisting teachers and administrators in understanding how students use technology both in and out of the classroom, and strengthening the relationship between students, teachers, and administrators about technology in the curriculum. Um, so in, in our, uh, each student who presents uh, in our conference will choose from uh, six different strands. Uh, so the first strand is making design and innovation, where students might discuss how they use uh, fabrication lab tools, such as the 3D printers or laser cutters for, for design projects. The second strand is technology in schools, uh, projects and collaborations. Uh, students on this strand might talk about um, uh, how they use uh, Skype in the classroom. Uh, for example, here at Marymount in an assembly, we use Skype to contact uh, our foreign exchange students from Spain. The third strand is educational technology tools, uh, where students might discuss how they use uh, pro uh, computer programs and software, such as Google SketchUp, iMovie, Adobe software, uh, and Final Cut Pro uh, in their uh, academic life. The next strand is students and social media, where Students might talk about how they use various platforms of social media uh, to connect with uh, other students uh, uh, in their schools, uh, such as at Marymount, we use uh, Snapchat. Uh, we use Snapchat uh, uh, to uh, the club uses Snapchat. Uh, then we have the Instagram for our athletic club and for our student government. Uh, lastly, uh, our jury reading, which is the school's newspaper, uses uh, a blog platform. Uh, the fifth strand is entrepreneurship, uh, which uh, is a class here at Marymount. Uh, and then the last strand we have is uh, technology and social justice, where students might use, uh, where students can use, find ways to bridge uh, technology and social justice to help issues uh, at school. Eunice, do you want me to talk about and entrepreneurship? Oh, yeah, that would be wonderful. So, um, thank you. So, uh, I co-teach our entrepreneurship class with uh, another teacher. And uh, the focus of the class is for the students to uh, develop a product and pitch that product to a group of venture capitalists and um, angel investors. We also have the students uh, interact with young entrepreneurs. And last year, um, our students participated in the Staples Design Challenge. So we're looking uh, for this strand. We really love schools where students are engaging in entrepreneurship programs and doing some really uh, interesting work in that field uh, to uh, share presentations and talk about the work that they're doing. Gabby? In planning this conference, we have bi-weekly conference calls. Um, we have these conference calls with planning schools, and we have a call with Steve and Lucy as well. 
And each school serves on a committee, so each school can sign up for one of the committees. And each school also gets a keynote speaker, or several keynote speakers. All the schools work together to promote the conference, and people submit the, propo the proposal, and the team of schools can decide which presentations will be accepted. And we accept more than reject, because the more is merrier. And we, yes, sorry. It's okay. And as for our committees, um, we, each committee is assigned a different project or, sorry, <laughs> sorry, um, such as public relations and social media, where we have the school, University School of Milwaukee run the Twitter, and every school is responsible for promotional videos and promotion within their own school and district. As for presenter outreach, we have proposal accept. Once our proposals are accepted, uh, they can reach out to the individuals and inform them on the next steps. And we do the proposals ourselves. We read through them, we follow through them, and then we take them to each of the next committees. Um, for volunteers, volunteer coordinators, each session has a presider to help during the session, and one school coordinates all of these people. In order to support the conference, we need to raise $15,000 in all, and each school needs to raise their own contributions. The money goes to supporting the infrastructure, such as the website, scheduling software, and the Blackboard software. We also seek out partners to promote the conference, and the partners don't pay, but they help promote the conference. conference. Um, each school has to find one or two partners to help with public relations. This is our website. Uh, later we will show you the link. It was designed by Steve, and Steve also helps us update our website. This is where you go submit a proposal, find, I'm sorry, <laughs> submit the proposal, find the conference schedule for 2016, and you can also sign up to be a partner. And a sponsor. Yes. So this is our first year using GoFundMe. Last year, we used a Kickstarter, and we even surpassed our goal. But we switched to GoFundMe so that we don't have to provide any awards, such as t-shirts. And our goal is not to raise money, but to, but rather to support the conference. Um, and the GoFundMe is beneficial in that it keeps going so that there's no deadline to reach a certain goal. And the rest of the money, if we don't reach the goal, comes from the Conception Alvar Fund for Innovation. So our conference this year is on Saturday, January 30th. Uh, well, next year, technically. And much like our conference earlier this year, it's going to be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And it's by students for all. So we have student presentations and student keynotes. And we encourage students to come attend all of these different presentations, as well as other people to come see what uh, the great things people have done with technology. Um, so we have a bunch of uh, keynote presenters. Eunice, do you want to talk about Young, young Hackers? Um, yeah, so the Young Hackers uh, is one of our uh, set in stone keynote speakers for next year. Uh, so they uh, they are a group of high school students who seek to empower other high school students um, from all different backgrounds uh, uh, who are interested in technology and programming. Uh, and they do this through coding, uh, through coding events where students learn to code and collaborate with other people from all over New York City. And then another one of our confirmed keynote present presenters is Coco Khalil, who is a 12-year-old student who has an incredible interest for innovation through engineering. And she has her own web series on robotics and coding, and it's called Very Happy Robot. So both her and uh, the young hackers are confirmed keynote speakers. Um, we're going to try to find a few more. And our uh, conference is also online and free. We use Blackboard Collaborate, which is what we're using now for this conference. Um, and any student can enter to present at our student technology conference. 
and from around the world from any country because it's online and free, so it's open to anybody. So some details about our conference. The call for proposals is now live. So uh, we'd love for anyone, to, uh, for their students, uh, to have ideas for any sessions, let us know and submit a proposal. Uh, please go to the website um, and you can find all the details about what you have to do what and what not. And you, if you'd like to support the conference, you can go to our GoFundMe, which is also live. Um, and we encourage this, but it's nothing that's um, required. And the student, the conference is open for students grades 6 to 12, but also college students. This provides a bigger range of ages for people to participate in the conference and a lot more ideas that will be added to it. So we want you to submit proposals. Uh, so this is our website, studenttechnologyconference.com. Uh, it's very easy to remember. It's the same as the name of our conference. Uh, and we encourage anyone uh, who's a student to submit their proposals or even uh, adults to encourage their students or children even uh, to do so as well. And Gabby Eunice and I are also working on proposals ourselves uh, for using Snapchat and Instagram at Marymount. That's something we're really excited about as well. So as uh, Anna Sophia said, here's a little bit more detail on the conference. The website is studenttechnologyconference.com. Uh, our GoFundMe is GoFundMe.com slash Student Tech Conference 2016. And our Twitter at Student Tech Conference 16, you'll notice there's a theme here. Um, and then we've given you all of our emails as well for if you have any uh, questions or comments or uh, suggestions or certainly if you want to participate, we're more than happy to help you. Um, so what we'd like to do now is open this up for questions and if you have a question you can type it in the chat box in the uh, lower left hand corner if you have any questions about the conference strands, the date, how to participate, anything, any of the sessions that we ran last year. Um, our team of four here can uh, certainly help you uh, with any of the questions that you have. So you can put a question in the chat box, or you can raise your virtual hand. That's the hand icon in the participant window. Okay, so we have a suggestion for moving it to March. Um, the issue on our end for March is that we are, I know, the end of Janu uh, January, the Australians and the New Zealanders are on vacation, but we're on vacation the last two weeks of March. Um, but Coach Carroll suggests coming and joining us for Aussie Live 2016. I think that would be a really great thing for, uh, certainly for us to do. We'd be more than happy to do it. Um, and I know we're talking with some of our juniors about doing a presentation for Aussie Live as well. Uh, the link for GoFundMe I can put in right now for you. Student Tech 2016. 2016, sorry. And we'd be more than happy to um, more than happy to encourage all of our presenters at the Global Ed Conference to submit something for Aussie Live. Absolutely. And yes, I'll speak on behalf of the students. Yes, we'll consider doing a presentation for you. Um, we won't consider it. We will do it. So um, we'd be more than happy to. Still scrolling through the questions. And then we'll put the, um, we will definitely put the link to the GoFundMe on Twitter as well. All right, do we have any other, other questions or comments from people in the room? Do all of you have students that you think would make, uh, would be willing to and interested in doing a presentation? 
there's Mr. Walters going for the clothes. <laughs> Getting some commitments. Very nice. Hey, did you see the question from Caitlin and Wendy? Are most of the schools that participate private or public? Uh, I missed that one. I can tell you that um, last year most of the schools were private. And I think one of the reasons for that was that it was our first time doing it. We were uh, we were new to doing something like this. So we tended to stay in our own our own environment of private schools, but our goal this year is to do a lot of outreach um, to public schools. And uh, to that end, where you know we've started to generate a list on our end here of public schools that our students know, and do a lot of personal outreach to them. So we really do want to get more public schools. Public schools do amazing, fantastic things in terms of technology, and are often overlooked. So that's why we want to make sure that they're actively involved in this conference as well. So if you know people in public schools, absolutely spread the word. Um, we'd love to have them part of this. So one of the things that we often talk about in, in this world is the difference between student voice, a phrase that Coach Carroll just used, and student-led or student direction. Um, is it, what is it you think, um, Mr. Walters and team, that you've done to make this more than just bringing students to the traditional table, but to actually have it be student-led? Does Mr. Walters get to answer that one, or? Sure. Sure, of course. Um, that's a really good question. Um, I think, and I'll speak for Steve and Lucy as well, we provide a pretty solid helping hand for the girls that are planning this because this is, it really is a huge undertaking to, to do something like this. Um, last year, you know, there were times where we were just completely clueless. So it was a learning experience for me as well as it was for the girls. And I think that was one of the important lessons that we learned last year is that we were all a community of learners. We were all working together with a common goal. Um, the way I look at it as well is that um, last year's team and this year's team, we're, you know, I may be the faculty advisor or the, the one that's uh, working with them, but we're all sort of equals. It's an equal flow of ideas and uh, planning. Um, I nudge a little bit to get things going and um, because they're students and they have they have other work to do. So, um, but I think it's a team effort, and I'll let them make mistakes and stumble, and I've made mistakes and stumbled as well. And um, so it really is in their hands. Even on the day of the conference, um, I just sort of sit back and I attend the sessions that I want to attend, but. Um, I'll give you probably the classic example. We had our first conference call two weeks ago, and um, Anna Sophia led the conference call. And I just sat back, and I was there as a resource, but Anna Sophia generated the agenda. Anna Sophia ran the whole call. She had everybody involved. Everybody understood the mission of what we were trying to do. Um, and to see a student in a position like that means that you're doing something good. And I think that's where this becomes more than just a student voice, but more of the students are the ones that are leading the effort on this, not not me, not Steve, and not Lucy. Like, although as a, we're here for support. So that was a really long answer to a very short question, but. Um, we also have a question from this one from there's no cost to present. There's no cost to attend. Uh, we did that specifically because we wanted we wanted people to be involved. Um, and the conference volunteers should really be students. We're, our goal is really to get this almost completely student read. However, we never say no to volunteers. So if you're an adult and you'd like to volunteer, 
we'd be more than happy to have you. We tried last year to not have any adult voices during the conference. And we were successful. Uh, Anna, Sophia, and Eunice, and Gabby, is there anything you'd like to add? I don't think so. I think that was great. All right. Well, I have a question for you then. How, how transformative has this been for you so far in terms of working on the planning committee and working with other schools? Well, it's been a really great, great collaborative experience. Experience yeah, to work with not her. only other students, Eunice and Gabby. I think we lost Anna Sophia. Do you want to just share brief? Oh, she's back. Eunice and Gabby, do you want to just briefly share how this has been transformative for you? Um, sure. I mean, it's a great way of learning how to network, and as Anna, Anna Sophia was saying, it's a great way of collaborating with other schools globally as well, and it's just a new amazing experience, and being a student in the Upper East Side of New York City, it's so different to get different outreach and try to get more support than we normally do, and also as for promoting, it's difficult, and we have to push ourselves to get ourselves recognized because we really need to have our voices represented as students. Excellent. Eunice? Eunice is quiet. That's okay. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, well, yeah, I, mean, I agree with uh, uh, my, my classmates that uh, yeah, it's it's been a wonderful experience just being able to find the in and outs of something, uh, something of this large scale, and figuring out what needs to be done, uh, and being able to uh, work with um, amazing people to just showcase their work on this, uh, on in this conference. It's really amazing to me, and I feel like this work is really worthwhile. Excellent, I would agree. Do we have any other questions? Um, we can certainly answer them in the chat box. All right, so before you go, we're going to put the conference website up again. And uh, we really hope you participate and we get your students to participate in this. Um, and we thank you in advance for that. Um, and Steve, I guess we'll wrap this up. Terrific. Thanks so much, ladies. You did a great job. Thanks to you, Mr. Walters. You're it's welcome. a pleasure working with all of you. Uh, please do visit the conference website. I encourage others. I loved the, the notes in the chat of people who are going, who have committed to getting other people involved, other students involved. So we would love that. So thanks, everybody. Thanks to this really proactive team. And thanks for being a part of the Global Education Conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Anna Sophia. Thanks, Eunice. Thanks, Gabby. <clears throat> thanks, Mr. Walters. Thanks, everybody. We've got a whole new set of sessions coming up. You get a little bit of a break now, but at the top of the hour, more terrific sessions to come. Bye now. Bye.